There must be a lot of people in there on the internet, I'll bet, because- the Wi-Fi of, is out everywhere here. Yeah, so everyone's in there on Wi-Fi, right? Yep. Okay. Hi everyone, come on in. Come on in. Yeah, you come on in. Okay. They don't have any Wi Fi in Texas. Texas needs to deal with their power grid. instead of my uterus. Oh, I'm sorry, did I say that loud part? Did I say that out loud? Okay. <laughs> Look how pretty you are, Monty Crosby. You are the prettiest chick. Oh, you're so sweet. How much weight? You have been on it, haven't you? Been I've been on it, on it, on it, on it. I have lost 30 pounds this year. What? Shut the door. If I'm remembering my high number for my headshots two years ago, I think I've dropped 50. Wow. I was, wow. I was that high number. How now. exciting. Thank you. I'm Thank so you. proud of you. I, I see your, I see you on social media. I'm like, oh my God, Monty has really lost money, uh, lost money. Lost lost weight. <laughs> Was that a 40 and slip? Um, I've, I've probably lost a little money this year too, because I've only booked a couple of things, but, um, I, I took some more headshots yesterday and apparently I shouldn't have been submitting with my old headshots at such a drastic weight loss because they were getting that person who was fuller and perhaps older looking. And then I audition and I'm, you know, newer with my smaller self. So well, congratulations. You look amazing. Thank you. And, and you should, and like I said, in the comment, when I was commenting on your post, you need to lead with your, your bookings because you've actually booked. And so you okay. need to lead with that because especially with agents, you know, you always want to lead with that now, with, but also with, with your customers. And we're going to talk more about customers later. Okay. Well, welcome everyone. It is almost time. We have um, one more minute, I believe, um, and we will get going. Um, I have a list. Um, Sarah uh, is here, but she's with she's at a Starbucks. She's without internet in uh, the great state of Texas. Uh, don't have no power grid, and um, and so now uh, all the electricity is out and therefore all the Wi-Fi is out. So uh, she's without Wi-Fi as of a lot of Texas right now. So she's joining us from a Starbucks. So thank you, Sarah, for being at the Starbucks. And so she gave me a list of what she wants me to remember. And so I have that list. So we'll start with that list first and then we're gonna get into what you're here for. Okay, uh, let me see. A few more people are coming in there. There is my client I have later on to this afternoon, a Amy Schumacher. Love you and keep on coming in, everyone. Perfection. Perfection. It is hot here in the great state of New Jersey. Um, outside, my dog did not want to go outside but he, she did for a hot minute and um, she's hot everywhere. Um, admit all, keep going. Um, hi everyone, come on in. We'll give a few more seconds because there's a lot of people coming in here right now. Hi everyone, come on in, come on in. Yesterday was awesome. Uh, wasn't it? James is great. Everyone give a high five for James Hallett. He's amazing. Oh my God. There's Miss Judy too. Um, James Hallett is amazing. Um, such a good person, such a good person. He has a good heart. He really supports like all actors, which is, uh, really great. And, 
Um, so funny because this is the weirdest thing. I had a business before Actors Fast Track in the 90s in New York, and it was called Strategies. And I had a partner in New York, right? And uh, we wrote a book together. And one of her things that she worked on to get was she was like, I have to get um, an audition for Diary of Anne Frank on Broadway. I have to get an audition for Diary of Anne Frank on Broadway. And like she did all this shit to get. And then when she got the audition, she had that moment of realization that she should have asked for the job, not for the audition. She got exactly what she was asking for. So, cause like, I always do this to actors. Who of you guys have a job where you make money, you go to work and you write, we like, okay, right. And then, um, and you call it, most of us call it work. I have to go to work, right? I'm going to work, right? Um, and then, then I ask you, when I, when you, when you come to me as an actor, I, the first thing I always ask you is like, what's the dream? And 99% of you are going to say, well, Valerie, I just want to be a working actor. Well, guess what, y'all? You have a job, you call it working, and you call yourself an actor. You are getting exactly what you're asking for. So I really want you to understand that you need to be really clear about what you are asking for, because you might just get it. And, you know, as some of you guys were hopping on, I was talking to um fabulous Monty uh, Crosby, who was a client for a year. And she is now booking like a crazy person and she's in Tennessee. So you guys that are like, well, I'm somewhere random. How can I book acting work? Well, there's an example of somewhere random in Tennessee and is booking acting work. So um, plus they have some really good things I want to go to in Tennessee. Okay. Let's start at the beginning of my notes. All right. So there will be a winner chosen for the be best participation in the challenge. And I forgot to tell you guys that. And we did it in our last challenge. And that's great. We will announce it at the Summer Pitch Fest. There will be prizes for your uh, the agents in each room, the agents and managers in each room will pick a winner in their room. And then we will announce that and those people will also receive prizes. All of those prizes will be given at the Summer Pitch Fest, which is uh, Sunday, July 31st. I'm sorry, you have to be there to win. Um, so that's just the rules. Uh, and so, you know, but if you're really participating in this challenge, chances are you're coming to the Summer Pitch Fest, which is Sunday, July 31st. You get to pitch yourself for one minute in a breakout room to the agent that we are going to help you choose, right? So what's going to happen is tomorrow, we're going to do a webinar tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time, just an hour and a half of me just answering questions and filling you in on what we've already covered this week. And when I give you your assignment, you're going to have questions. So we're going to work on that tomorrow. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so the challenge, you know, goes another week, right? It's leading up to the Summer Pitch Fest, which is Sunday, July 31st. Um, we will shut off tickets. We've already shut off. And I want to uh, apologize to Enrique, I believe it was yesterday, who asked me if I if he met with me, would I what would I do? And I didn't understand he meant that if he bought the upgrade, the 197 upgrade to meet with me to have you me work on your pitch. And, and a couple of you have already done that. Um, would I work with you on your pitch? Yes, I would. However, we're shutting that off today. But um you know, uh, Enrique, if you still want it or whatever, talk to, to Sarah and she might be able to hook you up. But, um, but I didn't understand that's what you were asking. If you pay to work with me, of course, I'm going to work with you on what you need to work on. So, uh, but you have me all next week. You have the coaches that are in the Facebook group because clearly it's become difficult for me to be in that group. Just, you know, there's a lot going on over on this and getting ready to have, uh, you know, 13, 14 agents and managers come on a platform and watch a bunch of people do a one minute pitch. Okay. So anyway, um, come tomorrow. If you can, you'll get the recording. I'm sorry. There's been some issues with the recordings. We sent them out again today in a different format, hoping that that will help some of you with the recordings. Um, okay. So this is what I want you to do. You're going to build your pitch for agents. 
Now on Saturday, on Saturday, I am going to give you some names of the agents that are going to be there. I am not going to take the time on Saturday to give you their information. Okay. You will get that information of the people that participated after the event, but I'm going to give you some names of the people that are coming. So you can pre investigate, right? Um, there are four, currently four rooms. We might have to add a fifth depending on participants. And in each room, there's a uh, international new, uh, New York, Southeast, like, well, other regions. It's not just Southeast. It's like other regions in, the, in America. And then we have California. Those are our rooms. Okay. And so, you know, we, we sent out an email asking you what room you want to be in or what you're looking for. So we can put you in the correct room. Once you're in the room, like, can you move day of? No, you cannot. This is a very orchestrated thing that occurs, which means that at the at two hours in, we're going to teach in the morning, come to the morning. You want to participate in the morning because it's not just teaching. It's about a conversation of where you need to go in your acting career if you want results, if you want to get paid to act. So we're going to talk about that in the morning. And then you're going to have a break in time to do your makeup, your hair, brush your teeth, whatever you need to do, pee. And then you're going to, and then what you're going to come back and we're going to break you into breakout rooms. That's how it works. OK, and then you're going to come back to the room after your audition because we need to, um, you know, um, decompress together as a whole and move on to what's next. Um, and that's when we announce the winners. P.S. So, um, yeah. Um, OK, so assignment. Write your pitch. OK, so let's talk about that. So the pitch can be no more than one minute. You'll get cut off and you don't want it to be more than one minute. We've identified things for you all this week that say, what do you have that's worth money? You identified those things. Listen, if you have credits, start with the freaking credits because that gives you viability. If you went to Yale or Juilliard or RADA, please start with that as well if, if that's you have. If you've, if you, and now for all of you guys that are on here that are my clients or clients of Actors Fast Track that have already worked on your pitch, please do not go change something drastically without you let us know, right? One of your coaches or me if specifically. All right. So, okay. Just want to pre preface that right now because sometimes we, we fuck say things up for ourselves because we rethink things at the last minute because we're creatives, you know? And so we're like, oh, I really good idea. And like a lot of times it's not like a really good idea. So um, what I want is, you know, you like, look, you can be creative as possible in this pitch and you don't have to do the pitch to win the pitch because sometimes the person that necessarily wins the pitch isn't the person that's going to get signed by the agent. It's just that the, the pitch entertained them in that moment. And when asked to pick the best one, that's the one they remember. But if they need someone that you fit in within that category, they're going to call you or they're going to let us know. And frequently they let us know. And then we let all of you guys know who is interested and who you need to follow up with. We give you everyone's information so you can follow up with them anyway. Right. So the best agents I've ever had in my business have been the ones that pursued me. Or the ones that said, I really like you, but I'm not sure what to do with you. I don't worry about that. I know what to do with me. I can help you with that. But but yeah, like if I felt like they were the right energy, they were always rule breakers. <laughs> the name of my last book, not surprising. So like, I like that. I like someone who, th that. And so, you know, um, my expectations are that you communicate quickly with me when I call you, you always get me above scale or you attempt to get me above scale. Um, you communicate all changes, anything that comes through your office in a quick basis, you receive my, my audition and you download it and get it to casting as promptly as possible. Um, you know, I had a little tete to tete with my agent this week. He asked me for a PDF of my picture. I took on my phone. Fuck. I don't, 
do that. You're do that. Like, I, you know, I think he probably will never ask me that again is my feeling because I was kind of a little like, I, well, I don't know how to do that. Like, take care of that for me. I'm sorry, but you know, you make money from me. So I know what you do, but like, come on, you can make that into a PDF. <laughs> So, you know, like knowing what your what what it is that you need that works for you. Right. And we talked a lot about that. But what we need to talk now about is how you go get that, because that's what you're here for. So even if I personally, if you're a client and I don't think that you really should be looking for an agent, I'll tell you if you're a client. But like, you know, if I think that that's probably not the thing for you and generally like just let, so you know, like every person that comes to Actors Fast Track, I would say 90 percent of them, we do not start them looking for an agent. Now, 90% of them want to start by looking for an agent, but that's just silly as I've talked about already on this thing. So, but I'm allowing you an opportunity to try for an agent, right? So I'm going to tell you how you get the best bet bang for your buck. You reach out to them ahead of time because I'm going to tell you their names. Say, Hey, I'm going to meet you. And, um, uh, on Sunday, July 31st at the Summer Pitch Fest. I look forward to it. Here's my stuff. Do that. And then um, and then do the thing and then reach out to them afterwards. And if they don't contact you, they're not interested, right? Move on. Like if someone's not interested, it's it, it's like, it's it's it has nothing to do with your talent. It's that they don't need someone that is like you right now. Or you're too much work. You don't have anything of value that they can go sell. And that's a personal judgment because I could sell a fucking doorknob. But some people need a lot of evidence. Most need a lot of evidence to sell you. So you've got to come at them with your money. If you have that, come at them with your money. We have a few people on here that are doing that. I made $10,000 last year as an actor. I made six figures. I have people that have made six figures last year as an actor. You know, the way that Scott got a agent is he said, I made this much money. I forget what it was last year. You want a piece of that? And they, and they were like, yeah, you know, like, right. So I'm going to bring my commercial business over to you. Thank God he did. That's a long story, but Anyway, so start with the money, start with the credits. If you don't have that, may, you know, if you are really clear about your brand and you know that what you have is super cute and super, super realized, then I would leave with that. And I might even play that up all the way. If you need a little help with brand in tonight's email that goes out, we're going to give you our build your brand PDF. And that will help you at least start to develop a, a way. I'm going to do, okay, so I'm going to do a pitch for you if I was me trying to get a new agent. Hey, new agent, how are you? I'm sure you uh, might know me. I'm Valerie Hubbard. My credits include Castle Agents, The Shield, How I Met Your Mother, Resident Evil Extinction, True Blood, pretty much every Disney show. Anyway, a lot of stuff. And I know a lot of people. I've worked on both coasts, LA and New York and uh, Chicago as well. And uh, as you know, I, or maybe not, not know Mike, because I don't think the only reason I would leave my agent is if he went out of business. So I'm going to say that he went out of business. And so, you know, you're my first choice and let's set up a meeting. I'll give you a call next week to work that out. That would be my current pitch of I, Valerie, was looking for an agent right now and I was doing a pitch video. If I was you and I didn't have any credits, I might go, hey, everyone, my name is Valerie Hubbard. I'm uh, the boy in Palsy Broad who will take you through the fun house. You know, I'm a cross between Kathy Bates and Drew Barrymore. I play that woman that lives across the street from you. When you see me coming, you turn off your lights and pretend like you're not home. And since uh, you're a great agent in LA for TV and I have TV stamped all over my face, I would love to set up a meeting with you. I will give you a call next week to set that up. Thank you. Now, if I'm pitching at the Summer Pitch Fest and they, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be like, thank you for being here at the Pitch Fest. My name is Valerie Hubbard. And right, so I'm giving them what is going to be attractive to them, right? And so if I know that, I'm that, you know, middle America, Karen, blonde Karen, you know, all lives matter kind of chick. Like that's who I play or like someone's that really in your business or like really, you know, poor, you know, hillbilly, you know, kind of thing. Like that's my, my range. 
And so when we speak of range, remember what we talked about yesterday with James, we're talking about that it comes to, to a definitive at the end. You don't want to leave people confused. Confused buyers don't buy. Confused buyers don't buy. I'm going to say that again. Confused buyers don't buy. So if you're like, I can do this, I can do that, I can do this, I can do that, and I can blah, blah, blah. like, oh, uh, what? I don't know what you just did. And so they have to have a feeling of what you have to offer that is like, they need to know where to fit your book in the library. You know, a good agent has a library. Right. So think about that as you're writing it. It's one minute and you have all weekend to write it. And then what I would like you to do is put one on video. All next week, we're going to talk about this. This is all we're going to talk about. Right. We're going to build your pitch next week. So you have a week up until the summer pitch fest to, to perfect this pitch. And then after the summer pitch fest, I will begin to teach you how to take that pitch and turn it towards your customers, right? Which is, it's a different thing. But once you figure out how to stick your toe in the water, then you'll get really, really good at it. And it works, by the way. Um, we have we have a ton of evidence of that. But just like, you know, it's insane. Like reoccurring guest stars. Uh, Laura Bofill is on three things this year that got nominated for an Emmy. She's one of our clients. A lot of you guys know Angela, you know? So we have a lot of people that are working all of the time, right? Tosh has a recurring on Bel Air. Yay, Tosh. So we're very excited um, for all of our clients. And just seeing people book their first thing is very exciting. So this is all in possibility for you guys. You just need to learn how to sell yourself, but that's ahead of myself. So we're going to learn how to sell ourselves right now to someone that's going to sell us. But not really sell us because what we learned yesterday is that, oh, they advocate for us. They're an advocator. We really are the salesperson. So this is your first sales letter. If you've never written anything like this, I just want to say something about sales. Sales is service. Write that down. Sales is service. Producers have a pain gap. That pain gap is that they need uh, um, a, a, a feisty, young, fireplug Latino girl with curves. Well, Danielle Hernandez has all of that. Right. And so if she's put all of that out there enough, then she becomes a choice on the cupcake cart. Right. She is a cupcake. That's why I use that terminology. But like there's Danielle Hernandez, like, you know, oh, that's the girl. Like I need almost a cartoon character, like hourglass, like little Latina, you know, rah, rah, rah. I mean, that's that's Danielle. I mean, Danielle belongs on a sitcom. She belongs on her own show. She belongs on Bridgerton, right? And the more she sees that for herself, then it appears. And so then everything she does, I've watched this, this happen with her. Everything she does is around that person. So we get really clear about who that girl is. And she's a little spiritual and mystical. She's like puck a little bit. You know, she's a little naughty, but she's super good girl too. She's not evil, right? Is that all right, Danielle? Come off mute. She's writing it down. I'm, I'm, I'm. I am writing down naughty good girl because that is a summation of everything I try and to squish into. Yes, that is you. And so I'm really clear about what her brand is and what she puts out there, you guys. And it's not whether she gets an agent or not. It's it's her 14th letter to Shonda Rhimes that she wants to be on Bridgerton, which is like, or her pitch that she's already done. That's what's going to get her noticed. That's what always gets everyone noticed. 90% of the time, but I will tell actors over and over again, you know, I, as you can tell, this is not easy for me to help actors get agents because it's like, you know, you came to me to help you, like people come to me to help them, their dreams come true. And that, and, and I know 
that getting an agent is such a fucking small part of it, but that's where all your focus goes, right? So it's frustrating for me because I want to slap you and say, go get the thing, right? Like go get the thing that you want instead of worrying. If you have a good agent, enroll your agent in helping you to get the thing that you want. But if you don't, it doesn't matter. Still go get the thing you want. What are you waiting for? You're waiting for some magical person to show up that doesn't exist, right? So be really clear what an agent does for you. They advocate for you. They call and make sure you get nipple co covers. That's what happened with me, right? Or they make sure that you get paid on a forced call or they make sure that, um, you know, like I did this short film this last year and this, this year and, you know, it was kind of a shit show a little bit, but the woman's husband was the showrunner of House of Cards. And, you know, there was a lot of reasons to do the film. And I liked the part and I liked the director. She just wasn't organized like me. And that drives me crazy when I work as an actress. So it was a little bit of a shit show. And my agent is like me, Greg, he's like me. So he's like, I call him the night before. It's like 930 and he knows I go to bed early. I'm like, I don't have a call time yet. He's like, oh. You know, like, uh, uh, like not this again, right? That's what you want. Your agent that knows when you go to bed and knows that you need it. And like, come on, give us a reasonable call time. That's what you need. You need someone that advocates for you and make sure that you get the money you deserve and make sure you get paid on time. That's what an agent does. This whole idea that they're going to give you a career. I don't know where you got that. Yes, I do. From every fucking teacher out there. That teaches you how to go get an agent. That's all they teach you. How to go get an agent, how to go get an agent. How do you get a, how do you go get an agent? Spend a whole year coming together with your, how to get an agent pack. Great. What are you doing? Stop that, right? But you can go pitch on my bitches. <laughs> oh my God, I'm a fucking dichotomy. I like go, I like say one thing and do the other, but it's, I mean, yeah. Okay. Um, so tomorrow you can come and ask some questions but if you have questions right now about it about pitch raise your hand i want to okay yes violetta come on down because you had your hand up the last two days and i haven't called on you, uh, can you hello can you hear me mm -hmm. okay, last time people don't can hear me so my question was that basically, so I like, you know, I reached out back in May to a bunch of agencies and so a lot of them opened them, but they never replied to me. And like, I had like two people interested in me, um, Jackie Reed and Diana, can't remember last name, from Stars Line. And she sent me, told me, and I, she asked, she was interested and told me to send an audition, which I did. But like, I've been doing all this stuff and like reaching out, but nobody's like, responding or there's like very little people responding so and like well, okay New jersey all right so let's not make this mean anything okay it doesn't mean anything all right first of all let's go thank you very much that doesn't mean anything and then the second thing i want to say to you is that well both jackie and both barbara are going to be uh judges at the thing so i think we'll put you in jackie's room because cat arcos is also in there and i I like her. She's she's getting good at what she does. So I, I like her. So I think let's put you in that room and then you can reach back out to Barbara. But I but I think that, um, you know, maybe Jackie will bite this time and I and just keep doing what you're doing because you're getting responses and, you know, you're close. So and, just keep going. And I know. So basically, I also um, so yesterday after once we got the I went to Stranger Things and like checked like by the star meter and uh, all the agents, the people like the between 50,000 and 1,000 star meter and saw their agents. So I think I might look into that too. Were most of them Atlanta? Yeah, most of them are in Georgia or oh. Los Angeles. Uh-huh, right. Okay, um, so um, I mean, I still think that that would be a good thing for you. Mm -hmm. Atlanta. Like, I, I don't think that's a bad thing for you. So just, we're going to put you though in the New York room. Okay. Okay. Anna Maria. Anna Maria. Anna Maria. 
Come to the window. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So I've got a question. Um, how would you word it if you have like 10 different people from casting directors, producers, directors, maybe writers that said, I will put you on my actor's file. Okay. You so you're going to say, so I got busy with zoom, with a uh, zoom coffee during COVID. And I now have great relationships with Julie Ashton, go down the list, right? Put okay. the best names up front. And so, uh, in, fa you can, so help in fact, Julie introduced me to her whole family, like something like that or something. Okay. 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 All right. Does that help? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I might need to get help with um, who's like list wise because I have no clue, but yeah, I could talk to Scott or somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Just have that. someone help out, you out with the list. Get Scott to help you Okay. out with the Sounds list. Good. Okay. okay. Yeah, and make it really like casual, like, Hey, I got crazy with zoom coffee during COVID and I made relationships with, and just list them off baby, because okay. you did really well with that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. You're welcome. Rosemary. Yes. How, Hey, how do hey. you? Hi. 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 I'm in California. I'm Cali Cali. Okay. Um, and my question is um, <clears throat> when you're, I'm, I'm kind of imagining and thinking that um, I'm older than most actors, so I was thinking that that might be a, um, a boon for them to know that I'm older, wiser, more experienced, especially if I don't have a lot of credits. So I'm thinking that- Oh yeah, I would lean into situation. your brand then because I think your brand is super sexy. Um, so here's the other thing they need to know about women of a certain age. They need to know that you are ready to be on camera, that you have some experience or that you've trained to be on camera mm -hmm. and that you know how to memorize lines, right? Like, and you know how to remember lines like that. Seriously, that's what they want to know. Mm -hmm. And that you're not a crazy, uh, crazy, crazy uh, uh, girl on set, right? Like, so right. just, um, you know, uh, I would give them a little of that, like, you know, and then just say, you know, um, and then, you know, sometimes I think like, so I get where you're going to get the brand document. Sometimes I think it's really good to, you don't need to like, so buoyant ballsy broad who will take you through the fun house. That's a branding statement that was built through the process that I teach you in the brand document that I'm sending you. Mm -hmm. Now, if I was to make that like the title of my entire company, like if I was going to name my production company, it might be adorable bully. Because that's like the uh, of everything that I've played in the last 35 years as mm -hmm. an actress is like, it's adorable bully and it's somewhere on that spectrum, mm -hmm. right? But if you look at all famous actors, they play one thing. Like you see that, like, right? Like look at Brad Pitt. He plays uh, the sexy bad guy, the cute bad guy, the cute bad guy, right? That's like Brad Pitt. He's the cute bad guy, kind of like the cute fuck up. Right, that he gets away with stuff because he's so cute. cute. Right, right. Oh, damn him in that skirt. He looks so cute in that skirt. I just love Brad Pitt. Let's just take a Brad Pitt moment. Mm. I love him. Mm. <laughs> he's guy like this. Okay. Um, I love Brad Pitt. And if any of you ever meet Brad Pitt and you don't call me, I will never speak to you again. Okay. Um, and I wish that him and Jennifer Aniston would get back together. They might. So I was thinking more like the, you know, the sassy, you know, that's still, does that still play out nowadays? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that like, look, you know, you want to get down to the essence of what rosemary shows up every freaking time there's something that shows up every time and the more you know that it helps mm -hmm. you in so many things you guys like it helps you in commercials because you know when you go to commercials and they're like oh the um they say oh the woman that's having tea and then they maybe give like and it's so general the woman that's having tea right but they bring you in and and you're like okay well what do i always bring to the table right mm -hmm. and so like i bring a buoyant ballsy broad so i bring like the woman that's having tea is the tea ready yet can we drink it now right like so yeah. that would be a choice for me that would make wake me in what i do better than everyone else so i always tell the story cuz this will help you rosemary Years ago, an, a, a casting director in New York called my agent and they were like, uh, the breakdown was for salty, earthy, not the brightest bulb in the bunch. 
And he said, who are you, who do you want to send in on this? And my agent said, well, I can send you people, but Valerie Hubbard's going to book it because he knew that I did salty, earthy, not the brightest bulb in the bunch better than anyone else in New York. So mm -hmm. Standing in what you do better than everyone else. And so for you guys like, well, how do I figure that out? Well, what do scene study teachers cast you in when they give you your first scene? Because they are typing you. Because, no, because every human being wants to look good. <laughs> and so an mm -hmm. acting teacher isn't going to give you a stretch scene that you can't get to in the first scene that they give you. They're going to give you whatever they see your brand as. So pay attention mm -hmm. to that. What's that movie you saw? And you go, oh, I could have done that part. Because every one of you has done that, right? Oh, I could do that part. So you begin to identify it for yourself. What is that thing that you have, that essence, right? Ab about you, right? So I'm not asking you, I could play a cop, a doctor, a mm -hmm. lawyer. Well, so could we all. Like, who is the cop? Tell me the story. What is it, right? Like, like. Um, you know, like everyone, like even Meryl Streep has a, an entitlement in everything she does. There's an entitlement. Yeah. There's a little bit of a, like, uh, you know, yeah. I worked a lot with John Guare. He actually wrote a play for me and he told me what he goes, Oh, Meryl, just like Meryl. He said like Man, Meryl Streep is who he was talking about. <laughs> like, Oh yeah. Just like Meryl. <laughs> Okay. Right. But like, yeah. you know, know what, know what your brand is. Okay. You'll, you'll figure do. it out. Yeah. We're going to work on it. Come it's all next week. We're going to work on it. All right. So, uh, so I'm going over a little bit. So if you want to stick around, I, I have time. I have one more client today, the fabulous Amy Schumacher. Yay. And so uh, we will talk then. Um, and so uh, yes, Cindy. Yeah, so uh, I, I, I'm i going to piggyback uh, Rosemary a little bit and just say I know that you and I have talked about my brand and I know that I have to use my brand because I don't have the, the legitimate uh, actor paying credits to um to pitch you know all the stuff that i've done i've done basically for free or i've paid to do it um yeah. and i just can't find my one um my one or two sentence i know that we talked about you know the youtube series film that i did and the certain things that you know the th certain statements i'm I, over I, it I, that's I, unfortunate okay. and i guess I'm, I'm gonna stop you okay I don't, I, first of all, bu I call bullshit because the stuff that you've sent me, the pitch is there. You said it more than one, one way in the stuff that you've sent me, your pitch videos. It's there, Cindy. Just watch it. It's there. You, part of you asking me about it is your brand. <laughs> like you have to trust yourself because I think you're super marketable. I think that um, there's a lot of things that you could be. I mean, we talked about, you know, all dead to me and there's kind of like sitcom moms and like that kind, like you are a, you play such a great basket case. Like you play this like, you know, woman that's got it all together, but doesn't got it all together and has this heart, this bleeding heart and, you know, all the things that when you talk about yourself in those pitch videos, it's really present. But so I haven't been keeping up on those pitch, pitch videos and I haven't been, okay. I haven't been well, putting why? myself out like, there. Look, I went to hire a doctor two years ago because I ended up in the hospital with, um, during my three day and I went to this doctor and I did all these supplements and I'm still doing them, but am I doing everything she told me to do? No. What happened today? My stomach started spasming. And the reason I'm telling you that is because you have the tools and you've used the tools. So the only reason you're not using the tools is because some fucking old story is up there in your head telling you this isn't working. It's not going to work. It's never worked before. Why all of a sudden is it going to work this time? What can I do differently? And the thing that I want you to know is that you have everything you need. You are um, really super interesting. You are hilarious. 
Um, and I think there's a lot of work out there for you. I think that you just have to be really clear. And I think that you can just be a little discombobulated. And that really is what, look, what I want you to do is I want you to write, this is your assignment. I want you to go home and I want you, you're home, but I want, you to, write, I want you to watch those pitch videos and write down the stuff that really works. And that's okay. what you're going to do. The pitch videos, I'm telling you, they didn't, they did. Yeah. Okay. They were, they were those pitch videos. Oh, okay. So listen to me. So it's if changed. someone comes and tells you about something that they think you should buy because it saves your life, how how many times does it take you to even pay attention to this? It takes you 15 times. That's what they will tell you in any marketing course or book. 15 times. So you sent out a pitch video. Oh, I didn't get an answer. Or no, maybe I, I did. You yeah. got an answer, didn't you? Cindy? I did, but I didn't say my brand on it. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. That's what I'm telling you. That's uh, what I'm telling you, Cindy. You did. It's there in how you talk about yourself. Okay. Okay. It's there. Yeah. You don't need the fancy, fancy statement. I don't, I, I never use mine. I mean, you are, you know, you, you know, um, we, we, we talked about like that, the basket case, the girl that's got it together, that that's fault, not really got it together. We've talked a lot about this. I just think that you are, yeah, you're backing off of it because it's really there in all those videos. Just go watch the videos. Okay. I'm sorry, one second. Cindy and I belong to a, a actors, writers, producers group. Got and it. we've written stuff for, for everybody who's in the group. I've That's written stuff for her. And she kills it. She kills when she reads on Zoom. She kills it. Yeah. You know, and how does she, she kill it, Rosemary? It. Tell Meaning us how she kills it. She kills it in the sense that she has this voice. And she, puts, she presents this kind of uh, innocence, but... I don't know what I'm doing kind of character. And, and she has this way about her that um, that makes that draws you in to her because of just how she looks and the way she presents it, how she reads. I love you. I told her before. <laughs> so did you hear that, Cindy? She I did. And, yeah. She told Thank you. you this. I appreciate that because I have a totally different um, experience of that. So thank you. Well, and you know, Cindy, listen, you know, the other day in my meditation, it said, and you know this because you're a physical person, that it said uh, the person that we think of as ourself is not who we are. Yeah. Yeah. And they all I teach, teach everybody else how to take care of themselves and to be fit and yeah. I can't give that. My husband's a healthy chef. <laughs> and I'm getting bullshit fast food, you know, like, hello, hello. It's not anything to do with what's available. Sometimes it's like right in front of you. Yeah. And usually the thing that, remember this, Cindy, usually it's the thing that is like here that we're like, what's my brand? What's my brand? What's my brand? And we're like, oh, Valerie, it's like right there. Oh, you know. So anyway, thank you for thank, thank you for girl. being vulnerable. We really appreciate it. Ray, Ray, come on down. Hi. Hello, Valerie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm in the UK, darling. I've got a bit of a problem coming up. Um, I've been cast for something, and we're filming it on Friday and Saturday in England. Okay. And I've signed. I've signed up for your festival. Is there a virtual pitch I could do? Yeah, it's Sunday. The Sunday, the thirty first. That is, is a virtual, virtual pitch. It's not one where you have to be there. No, it well, it is. You have to be there to do the virtual pitch on Sunday the thirty first. Sorry, no, I mean physically, you don't have to be there. No, just I don't online. have to be in America. No, I don't. Yeah, have to be it's just online. Oh no, it's no, all online because there's going to be. No, I just had this moment where I thought, oh my god, you know, yeah. I've messed this up. And one thing I will say, and I'll get off the line. Thank you so much. Uh, I've spent my whole life. I trained at the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art, and we were all of us in the final year were so screwed up about getting an agent. And by sheer fluke, I won the Best Actor Award, so I got one straight away at the final shows. But you're absolutely right. It's a stupid thing because I've sacked so many now. <laughs> Over the years, I've grown up and I've decided there are certain people, they're not doing it for you. And as you said before, 
nowadays especially they just send too many along for the same audition i've met clients from my agency before who were sitting in the room but i'm thinking i'm in competition with people who are on the same books it's ridiculous yeah so one of the things i would re recommend ray is because i told this to regina earlier uh -huh. this year i told regina go and um ohashi i said go go buy a little starbucks card for all the people that have hired you and mm. she did that and then she got a direct offer for law and order yeah. so sometimes like remember your low-hanging fruit when you've worked a lot as an actor go back and visit those people and say hey i was just thinking of you and, and let's have a tea or you know here's a little here's a little thing of tea or you know like here's a little uh you know thank like a little note or just like thinking of you because a lot of times that really um you know it's like always you know like back in the day we used to say like drop by your agent you'll get an audition right and so you drop by your commercial agent and you drop off some cookies and then damn it if it didn't happen the next day you'd get a you get an audition and it's like yeah. you know uh so i would recommend that go back to people that have hired you before uh, well, funny, sorry to interrupt you but funny you should say that because i recently did something during the covid lockdown by virtue of ringing an old friend of mine who's a director and the copywriter who did a commercial as well that i did and they came up with this campaign against rishi sunak who's a currently going for prime minister mm -hmm. and I led the campaign and we won an award for the campaign. So you're absolutely right. That's awesome. Okay, <laughs> yeah. perfect. Perfect. Okay, good. Okay. good. Thank, longer, you, but thank you very much. You're welcome. Ned Islav. Ned Islav. How's that? Wait, unmute. Hello. Hello, Valerie. My name is Ned Islav. Yeah, Ned you can Islav. Call me Ned. Where, where do you live? <laughs> Um, I live in the UK, in, in London, but at the moment I'm uh, in Bulgaria, where I'm actually from, just for the summertime, but I'll be back in London soon. Awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to ask you about this, uh, about building this pitch. Uh, my question is, um, uh, can we can we include, uh, because personally, uh, as I mentioned already, I don't know if you paid attention to that because you're very busy with also yeah. with others. That's not a problem. But um, uh, can I include my uh, experience in television? Because personally, uh, in acting, I have only um, experienced in uh, two, um, actually three short films, okay. uh, two plays, but only um, uh, only on academic stage. Okay, uh, and uh, festival all, in Bulgaria. You guys, we so want to uh, get rid. We want to get can rid. I, of, can I include my? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, he's stuck. Ned. Sorry. Okay, here. Are you here? Can you hear Hello? me? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here's yes. what I'm gonna say to you. Listen, it's let's take only and just, and I've only done, only done this, or I've only, or I've just done this. I want every one of you guys to remove that from your, your vocabulary right now. So I want you to tell the story of uh, my credits include blah, blah, blah. And if it's a good log line for that fits your brand where I played the, you know, the guy that did this or whatever, give me a little log line. And then that will describe your brand as well. So tell me about those films. Like, give me a little story about the films and don't worry about them. They're just short films in Bolivia or where, I mean, Bulgaria, I said Bolivia, Bulgaria. They're just yeah. uh, short films. Like they're just, they're four films that you worked on. I don't care how you worked on them. Yes, but I've also, uh, I've also have uh I also have previous experience in uh, in music, uh, singer in a boy band that was uh, formed in uh, the first edition of X Factor in Bulgaria. Uh, oh, well, that's and, even better. Uh, we became quite famous uh, worldwide because our, um, our mentor, yes, and uh, we have uh, four uh, videos and four very successful projects um, with then the boys. Then that's what you started uh, with. We're a little like, do you, yes, have an agent? Have, Do you have an agent? No, no, I don't have okay. an agent, but I'm looking for agent and manager. Okay, great. So start with the boy band. Yes. So then, so okay. I can include this because this is a yes! because, 
Yes, you have had success in a boy band. That is all you need to say. <laughs> television experience. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Just say, you know, like you guys, look, I had this girl that came to me and she was a ballerina um, from the Ukraine. She was a ballerina and she danced with um, uh, ball- uh, uh, with um, American Ballet Theater, with ABT. She was a ballerina and she retired. And someone told her in New York that she shouldn't tell people that. First of all, I wish I would know who that person is because I like to slap them. What are you talking about? If you've had success in another field that's similar to acting, whether it's like being in a boy band or being a ballerina or being a a 13 time Emmy award winner uh, journalist, which we had, you know, talk about that. And even like, like we have people that are judges and lawyers and doctors, and sometimes they use that right? Depending on what they're selling. So don't feel like you can't use that. You should always start with what your success is because here's the deal. If you can be successful in that, you can be successful in other things because it's a mindset. It's all a mindset. Okay. Hey, Laura Rodriguez. Hi. Yes. Thank you. Hi, I love you. I love everyone. You are amazing. Thank you. I'm still learning and very, very quiet, quietly. Um, I know my brand. I am the sexy Latina, la, 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 that everybody likes, make laugh everybody. And I understand that. I play that very well, but I am scared to don't be taken serious because the, the character, you know what I mean? So I want to okay, try so to- You just have to take yourself seriously. Like, don't worry about you guys have to stop worrying about what other people are going to do to you or what other people think of you or what other, like the only reason you should ever be focused on that is if you're trying to gather information that's going to help you be a better business person. But like, as far as like people not taking you seriously, are people not going to take you seriously? Yes. Are people going to take you seriously? Yes. Right. And so you, 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 like uh, there's this great interview I saw Reese Witherspoon said there's three kinds of people. One people that, that pull you up in the world, people that don't mean anything and people that pull you down. You need to focus on people that pull you up. Okay. Not, and, and get rid of the people. Love you, that pull you love down. you, love you. <laughs> okay. So thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Listen, let thank me you. Thank you. Have something. a great weekend. I will tell you something. I have, uh, a relationship with one of the most powerful, probably really the most powerful, if not the most powerful uh, d- director, producer, if I said this person's name, you would know them, in currently in Hollywood. And my friend, is all, and she was a client of ours, was also friends with him and his wife. And this was all during Me Too movement, right? So she gets called into this producer's office on the Sony lot, and he takes his dick out of his pants. Okay, now listen. He knows who she's friends with. Like, so sometimes people are just inherently fucking stupid. No matter what the rules are, what anything is, that's just the truth, right? And so he that was just fucking stupid. I'm sorry, just stupid. But like, you know, look, Years ago in the 80s, in one week, I was told, you're the best actor to come to New York this year to like, you're terrible. Who trained you? You can't act in a week. And that's when I learned that it's all a freaking opinion and it doesn't matter. If you want to be an actor, go be an actor. If you want to get paid to act, then you got to start reaching out to the people that are going to pay you to act. That is all. That is a whole story. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. One la- one last one, Jenna. Before I have to go, Jenna, go ahead. Hi, Valerie. Thank you so much. I really appreciate everything, and hope you're better soon. Um, hopefully, you can hear me all right. Yeah, I can. Yes. Perfect. Um, so yeah, basically, I'd narrowed it, as you know, down to two archetypes, as it were, for my pitch. One yeah. being off bitch detective one being femme fatale period drama lady now I'm yeah. concerned that obviously one I need to pick one and I totally agree with that 
the I'm but, but like, how do the they two come I've together? Hit. Like, uh, what's the di- what's the yeah exactly because they're both one's period drama, one's crime drama, but also period drama so niche and detectives so common and over you know saturated. Yeah. So it's like, what do I do? Right. So when I'm so what I'm seeing, and I don't know you as yet yet, but like what I'm seeing is that there's a um, almost an innocent sincerity about you, which um, which is really interesting, which I think that's where the gold is, right? Like a uh, truth teller, which can be period or not period. I don't really think that you need to put yourself in a period as much. Now, look, you're going to have several products, not several. I mean, I've been working at this for 35 years. I have like four products that I've made the same fucking person over and over again you play, right? And so you understand who that person is, but like, I think there's something there that ha- is in both those people. And that's what I'm interested in. Of course, okay. yeah. Well, what, what I've got is is a warmth, like a, I've got, I'm fiery, but it's because of my tender heart that I'm trying to like fight to protect. So I'm a fighter, but it's, you know, for, for reason of protecting my, my vulnerability, I guess. Um, yeah, but so I think like, the how, vulnerability how? is a little bit in your, um, you take, I think that you could do, play someone that takes, um, takes things at face value, like someone mm-hmm. that doesn't, so I'm someone that does that. I, I play those kind of characters yeah. a lot. So, you know, salty, earthy, not the brightest bulb in yeah. the bunch. Like, I think that could be the other side of you, maybe. Have you ever done comedy? Yeah, well, I get told that I'm hilarious without knowing it, and as soon as I try to be funny, I'm not funny. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm funny by default, by accident. Like people think I'm hilarious, and I'm not yeah. aware of it. So yeah, yeah so I'm working on it. Something sort my, of my are... as an actress. That would be something that would be really good to unpack as an actress for you. To go because more I'm... towards the comedy route. Than yeah. Drama. Yeah. Okay, you guys. Um, So thank you. Thank you, Jeff. All right. So remember that there is going to be a challenge winner that will be announced at the Summer Pitch Fest. If you have not gotten your summer game, your summer pitch tickets, please do. They will. We will close those down. Um, uh, And remember to build your pitch this weekend. Come tomorrow, 1 p.m. for more to the same channel and uh, go write your pitch and then make a video and put it on the I love actors Facebook page and um, and tag me uh, Brian who's Brian Coffey's been on there Scott Cargill's been on there a lot giving great feedback he's the beast when it comes to brand so really go after he brands all of our clients pretty much one minute pitch and we will see you guys on uh, either tomorrow or I'll be back here at 1 p.m. on Monday. All right, you guys, have a great weekend. I'll see you, some of you tomorrow. Okay, bye.